الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا أعلم واستغفرك لما أعلم أحبت في الله as we've discussed countless times but is always worth uh, reminding ourselves and mentioning and that is about the Takfiri zealots like groups like Daesh or ISIS or ISIL whatever you want to call them the supposed so-called Islamic State as well as Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab and other Takfiri groups and Al-Qaeda and groups who will come in the future because a lot of their characteristics you'll find are common characteristics and this is why they're called what? The Khawarij. Why do we refer to them as Khawarij? Even though we say they're neo tekfiris or what have you, that they might not have all of the uh, exact traits and characteristics, but there are some key traits in which they possess, which makes them common and which makes it permissible and possible for us to call them Khawarij, these neo tekfiri groups. And <clears throat> some of the traits, as we know, the Prophet والسلام, said, Al Khawarij Kilab al Nar. The Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. And the books of Hadith are full of Ahadith which mention the traits of the Khawarij. And in one of those narrations, the Prophet والسلام, mentioned that the Khawarij would pass through the religion similar to the arrow the way the arrow passes through its prey and from this some of the scholars deduce from this hadith that the Khawarij are not, are not Muslim they may take fear of the Khawarij some of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah uh, deduce this while others which I believe is the most correct view hold that the Khawarij are a rebellious sect and this is similar to the Athar of Ali ibn Abi Talib when he was asked about the Khawarij and he said that they are you know are they uh, uh, kuffar or are they disbelievers and he said no they are those who rebel against us or something similar to this kamaqil or kamaqal so some of the important traits that I want to mention, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because in my studies here, uh, my current studies that I'm doing now, as I'm working on my doctorate's degree, uh, is very pertinent to this topic. And I came across a lot of fawaid from one of our mashayikh, Sheikh Muhammad Tahir, uh, also known as Abu Salah, Al Afghani, Hafidullah Ta'ala. He's one of our Mashaikh in Kuwait who's originally Af Afghani <laughs> and he studied in Medina, did his uh, all of his studies, uh, his graduate studies in uh, Jama Islami in Medina. And so, alhamdulillah, we were able to benefit from him uh, in personal durus that we had with him or personal sittings. I had many sittings myself for my masters and he would just give me time to answer questions and likewise uh, the Sheikh used to teach in, at night uh, as a part of a community college uh, program for teaching the Arabic language to non-Arabic speakers and we were able to benefit from him and study Tawheed with him so anyhow from his in his PhD thesis and this is I have it here it's called Taqrirat A'immat al-Da'wa fi Mukhalafati Madhab al-Khawarij wa Ibtaliha wa Ibtalihu uh, by Muhammad Hisham al-Tahiri also known as Abu Salah al-Afghani and this fantastic piece of work and I'm going through some of the chapters now and benefiting uh, really <coughs> gives us insight to these groups that we're dealing with now uh, Daesh and so forth but his particular thesis is not exactly dealing with the contemporary groups but more so about the original Khawarij and 
distancing the Ayyam to Dawah, meaning Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and his descendants and those ulama, the Ali Sheikh family and those ulama from Najd and from uh, Jazirat al Arab, that uh, came after Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and studied with him and pass the, the, the knowledge down from that chain uh, what their position was as we see many of the Sufis and many of the groups and as many people know and refer to Wahhabi this is where they get the term from it it is a a term that they use in a negative connotation with a negative connotation to belittle Muhammad ibn the Wahhab and those who uh, took knowledge from him and those who uh, take knowledge and benefit from his books and uh, I don't like to say necessarily that our followers of him because although many of our ulama uh, um, uh, benefited and are from his madrasa so to speak that they are not muqallidin of Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab they do not make blind following of Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab nor yantasib al Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab no, nor do they call themselves Wahhabi but rather they call themselves uh, Sunni Salafi from Ahl Sunni wal Jama'ah adhering to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj and Methodology of the Salaf al -Sariq. getting back to the topic because we've strayed I, I want to mention just a couple of things. Just read a couple chapter headings of this fantastic book. If you know Arabic and you can get a hold of it, it's fantastic. One of the things he mentions in one of his chapters, it's called Istihlal al Khwarij Dimal Muslimin al Mukhalifin al Lahum wa Arad wa Aradahum wa Amwalahum. So this is uh, one of the chapters in his book in his thesis, his doctor, his PhD thesis, and it is called the Khawarijs making lawful the blood of the Muslims who differ with them and their honor and their wealth. And so just looking at this chapter title, we see that this is a trait of the original Khawarij who existed over 1400 years ago. And still to this day, this is a characteristic we find from Al-Qaeda and ISIS and Boko Haram and these other groups. Who do Shabab kill mainly in Somalia? Or completely. It's, it's Muslims. Somalia is a Muslim country. And when they blow up uh, and attack hotels, kill Muslim policemen and Muslim government officials that they target, but they kill students, they kill women, uh, they send women suicide bombers into cafes, into hotels. They're killing Muslims. And they are destroying the wealth of the Muslims. Like who? Like the original Khawarij. Likewise, what we see in Afga uh, Afghanistan as well, but we see in uh, Pakistan and we see in Syria and Iraq. And in fact, in Libya and all over the world, in Yemen, uh, we see the same sifat of Al-Qaeda and Al-Khawarij and the Takfiriyin in general <coughs> is that they make the, uh, anyone who differs with them their blood is lawful so for them this is a Qaeda this is a principle they take where you don't find this except for with the Khawarij predominantly that although it's a Hizbi trait of all the groups in the sense that they those who they differ with they might attack their honor, they might uh, consider them from Ahla Bida or what have you, but it's mainly the Khawarij, mainly the Khawarij and the, the Takfiri groups who steal the wealth of, the, uh, of those who differ with them and kill and fight and torture and behead and shoot at point blank range uh, the Muslims. This is uh, a trait, a Hizbi trait, an evil, wicked Hizbi trait of the Khwarij, to make takfir of those who differ with them. And this is what we see from Boko Haram, ISIS, uh, Al-Qaeda, all their affiliates, uh, and the other groups of Shabab. Uh, likewise, uh, another chapter that he mentioned is Qol al-Khwarij fi enna dar al-mukhalifihim min al-muslimin dar al-kufr 
this is a, a very, uh, and I'm just going to stop there because I went much longer than I wanted to. Uh, actually, I'll do one more bab after this. Uh, but he, he mentioned also, he, he entitled another one of his uh, issues that he looked into is called the statements of the Khawarij regarding the countries or places which of those places which differ from them from amongst the Muslims and that they consider them to be Dar al Kufr. If you were to look into uh, what was the statements of Bin Laden that you will find? That the Taliban to him were the only Muslims. This was uh, the, the rice of uh, the, the head of Al Qaeda. And likewise, those who came after them, they felt, felt that the only Dola to Islamia to them was Afghanistan. This is a trade of who? Of the Khwarij, that they make takfir of all the other ballots. So you're telling me Egypt's not Muslim? Tell me Saudi Arabia's not Muslim? You're telling me, you know, all these Muslims, Libya, Tunis, uh, Maghrib, all these, uh, Indonesia, uh, all these, uh, Nigeria, all these Muslim countries are no longer Muslim in their eyes. Why? Because they differ with them. Because they're not on their medheb, they're not on their minhaj, sulkhas. They make takfir of the whole planet, except them. And if you look at what you'll, uh, for those, Wallahu Musta'an, who see what uh, ISIS, uh, in their magazines and in their publications, you'll find that this is exactly, and this is one of the things I just wrote about just yesterday, and found some direct quotes, that they make takfir of everyone except those, except their wilayat, they consider them. Their places of abodes, that they have taken control of. Those are the only Islamic states. Those are the only places that it's permissible to make hijra. They even mentioned Saudi Arabia and these other places not permissible to make hijra. This is dalal mubin. This is clear and evil misguidance. That this afkar, but this afkar they inherited from who? From the Khawarij. Because the Khawarij used to make takfir of those people, uh, of those lands which they did not, uh, which they were not in control of. And likewise, ISIS and Al-Qaeda do the same, especially ISIS because they have uh, evolved and taken, you know, control of large uh, swaths of territory, unlike uh, Al-Qaeda, and ruled those territories. Uh, the last trait I want to mention, and this is pertinent to what we just said, قول الخوارج بوجوب الهجرة إلى دارهم We'll stop there. Uh, the statement of the Khawarij, or the statements of the Khawarij, or their statement regarding the obligation to make hijra to them. Whenever you read, if you were to read and you hear in what's been published, uh, uh, I'm talking about direct going to their direct sources. You know, I've seen some of their videos. I've seen, read their magazines. What they exactly say, that the hijra is only permissible to them. It's only permissible because they, in their eyes, are the only uh, Muslim ab abodes. The rest of the earth is Dar al-Harb to them. Is the Dar, is the place of a uh, abode of war. This is what they say. This is their al -fad. This is their kalam. This is their statement that you'll find, which is uh, in, in printed sources. And from their scholars. And so this is a goal of the original Khawarij, like the Azarika. And the Azarika, Azarika were one of the original Khawarij sects and that they were so extreme that they used to make takfir of themselves if they did not make hijra to a land that they controlled. That is, you, you can't uh, become more extreme than that. That you you consider yourself a disbeliever until you've left, you made hijra to uh, such and such land under the uh, Khawarij leader. Likewise, ISIL or Daesh encourage attacks upon in in all over the world. Anyone, not just anyone who opposes them, but especially those who oppose them, which is most of the world, but those that are actively attacking them. They encourage people who abide in those lands, who can't make hatred to their failed false state, to 
uh, kill and, and terrorize and spill the blood of people. Everyone from the milkman to the child on the street to anyone. They encourage this kind of evil, this kind of deviance. Unlike think what we really hardly can imagine in Islamic history, uh, groups going this uh, deviant, that they are truly the Kilab and Nar, the dogs of the hellfire, and they feed off the blood of the Muslims, first and foremost, and then everyone else. And as I believe it was Omar or Ibn Omar who said about the Khawarij, the original Khawarij, يَتْرُكُونَ أَهْلَ أُوثَانِ وَيُقَاتِلُونَ أَهْلِ إِيمَانِ Okay, Maqal. He said that they leave the people of idol worship and they kill the people of Iman, meaning the Muslims. That, that's who their main casualties. And what's going on in Pakistan, Afghanistan, they can't even, and, and all these other countries that have no stability or pockets of stability or maybe some, you know, they have different degrees of stability, but still, they still have a lot of lawless territory with a lot of bloodshed that's constantly being spilled between Muslims often. And this is the, one of the effects, aside from the enemies of Islam, those people who hate Islam and plot and plan and so forth, but also those deviant so-called Muslims like ISIS and others who never want peace. They can't sit down at the table because they feel that that's compromise of their version of the Sharia. And they only believe in the world is black and white and at the tip of their sword being the only solution. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from their evil and protect the Muslims everywhere from their evil and protect the earth from their evil and wipe them off the face of the earth, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah bless the Muslims everywhere, protect the Muslims everywhere, preserve the Muslims everywhere and guide this creation to the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.